Let's talk some chess. I think this game lives up to the moniker Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. Jan Gustafsson is a German grandmaster, so very strong chess player, um, playing uh, on a stream and commentating his games as he goes. He's playing against someone with the username Salomon from Norway, and unfortunately for Jan, he doesn't realize this is actually Magnus Carlsen, uh, one of the strongest players alive, if not the strongest player uh, alive at the time. Um, and uh, pretty funny to see sort of how it unfolds. Jan was a great sport about it, um, but we'll sort of talk about the game as it develops, and uh, Jan kicks us off here with knight to f3. Um, here Magnus plays uh, f5, and Jan immediately goes, oh, he's trying to beat me with the Dutch. This is the Dutch defense, and he says he's trying to humiliate me by beating me with the Dutch. This is not known as a very strong defense. It, it gives white uh, um, an advantage in the opening, so Jan is sort of already sort of laughing at these kind of funny moves. Um, g3 here by Jan, knight to f6, bishop fianchetto to g2, and uh, e6 by uh, Magnus. Uh, Jan castles kingside, and now bishop to e7, c4, preventing the knight potentially from coming to d5, and now uh, kingside castle by Magnus. Knight to c3, d6, d4, uh, developing out in the center, or building out in the center, and now a5, um, adding some pressure along this flank. b3, preventing uh, this a f uh, a4 move from really being uh, potent, and now queen to e8 by Magnus, maybe preparing to get the queen to the king side, but sort of we'll see where this queen goes. Um, bishop to a3 by Jan, uh, knight to a6, uh, rook to c1, um, getting the rook closer to the center of the board, and now knight to b4 um, by, uh, by Magnus. Um, and here we have queen to d2 uh, by Jan. And this uh, all, very fine game so far um, for um, Jan. He has a slight advantage here with white pieces, as often happens with the Dutch defense. The engine wants you to play bishop to b2 here, fiend the bishop. Maybe this diagonal opens up and the bishop becomes more powerful. It definitely doesn't like queen to d2 because this allows knight to e4 with a tempo. This obviously comes in an attack on the queen. So Jan here trades uh, knight takes on uh, e4, pawn takes on e4, and now this came with an attack on the knight on f3, so the knight retreats to e1. And already we can sort of see that Magnus has a ton of space. Um, he, all of Jan's pieces are cramped on the third rank or below, most of them on the second rank or below. Um, this knight is blocking these two rooks from protecting each other and um, just getting really cramped up against uh, the first rank. Queen to g6 here by Magnus. Again, the idea behind rerouting the queen to e8. Now the queen can come to the g-file, lining up with the enemy king. And now uh, knight to c2, trying to get this pesky knight off of b4. Um, bishop to g5 here by, uh, by Magnus, developing with the tempo. This comes with an attack on the queen. And already, I think... Um, I think it was this move. Yeah, it was It was move 13. Jan's are, he already says, I already dislike my position. I don't know if there's a reason to dislike it, but I dislike it. Maybe alluding to that space example. Uh, the engine actually says it's okay for white here with the proper defense, but definitely not something that a human enjoys playing. Um, so anyways, knight to c2, bishop to g5, and now uh, e3 blocking the bishop from the queen. Uh, but now this allows uh, a wonderful landing square for the knight on d3. Um, so now this knight is just controlling a ton of squares in Jan's uh, camp, and this is no fun. It's also attacking the bishop on c1, and Jan does not want to give up the exchange, so he plays bishop to d1. Um, and here we have e5 uh, by Magnus trying to sort of break open the center and, and get something going. Um, and here Jan uh, really paused for a while. He, he made some comments here. Um, first he said, should I take this pawn? Um, on, on e5, it, it leads to a big compensation for my opponent on all the dark squares. Um, and then he made a, a funnier comment. He said, why is this guy blitzing out every move? He never thinks. Um, and it's because Jan is sort of taking time, playing moves, slowly thinking about them, and Magnus is just move, 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 because obviously he's he's so good that he doesn't really need time to, to think about it too much. So Jan is already a little bit freaked out that he's playing such a, you know, such good moves that are happening so quickly. And here Jan goes back and forth about if he wants to capture this pawn or not. He eventually uh, decides not and captures the pawn on e4 with the bishop. Unfortunately for him, it actually works out quite well if you capture the pawn on e5. So let's just look at this line. D captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now queen to d5 with check, um, which is a nice move to centralize the queen. The bishop blocks on e6, attacking the queen, but now queen takes on e4. Instead of bishop takes on e4, um, and now uh, after bishop to f5, again attacking the queen, now you have, again, queen to d5 check, and now uh, you can go back and forth, but the engine prefers uh, king to h8, and now just e4 by Jan, um, and this is a, a very nice position. You are up upon 
um, this, you know, Magnus is going to have to do something about this pawn attacking the bishop. You can't capture back because both the queen and the bishop are guarding the square. So the bishop has to sort of retreat, and then Jan can enjoy his pawn advantage with a very centralized queen that's also attacking this uh, b7 pawn. So um, uh, just a nice position here. Unfortunately, he didn't see this or, or calculate this far and just plays bishop takes on e4. Reasonable. Basically, he wants to trade this bishop for this knight, and that doesn't make sense. We'll see why in a moment. This bishop isn't doing much. Uh, it's sort of hemmed in by this pawn, whereas this knight is very powerful. So it's a very reasonable trade. Um, bishop takes on e4, queen takes, and now queen takes on d3. And that's what I meant about trading the bishop for a queen. Uh, sorry, for a knight. Um, but now this allows queen to f3 by Magnus. And here Jan just kind of went, whoa, um, and is really thinking about uh, how to defend here. Uh, this is now a very dangerous queen. Um, and here uh, plays the move uh, d takes on e5. But unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's a little bit too late now. Um, now Magnus uh, plays this bishop to f5 move, developing a piece with the tempo against the enemy queen. Um, and here, uh, Jan tries to block by just playing e4, attacking uh, the bishop on f5, and uh, maybe uh, sacrificing the pawn. It seems like, but the bottom line here is that there actually is a move that leads to like a very decisive advantage for Jan with the white pieces that move is knight to d4 um sacrificing the queen on d3 but attacking the black queen on f3 so if bishop takes knight takes uh queen bishop takes rook knight takes bishop uh and now the bishop retreats to e2 and now you can sort of see Jan is up uh one two Jan is up two pawns and he has um, he basically has two pawns and a knight for a rook, um, which can be, go either way, sort of, but we'll see how this develops. Uh, rook to d2, attacking the bishop. Um, an intermezzo here, a4, bishop retreats, and now bishop retreats to g4. We have uh, h3 uh, here, uh, h6, pawn takes, pawn takes, and now pawn takes on uh, d6. Pawn takes back, and now just king to f1, a takes uh, a takes on b3. And now in this position, uh, again, Jan is up two pawns. Um, these are all very weak pawns. They, you know, these two pawns are sort of stacked on top of each other. Uh, doubled up pawns is the correct term. Uh, here are some pawn islands that are going to be really tough to defend. The rook is already eyeing this pawn on uh, d6. This bishop is going to be very powerful. It's already attacking this pawn on g7. So this is a better end game for Jan, but maybe a little bit difficult to see this whole way. Um, these, they're just playing with five minutes on the clock, so we can't really blame them. So instead of playing this knight to c4 move and trading queens, here he goes for e4, trying to block, um, and sort of gives up queens another way. So now, obviously, this opens up a discovered attack from the queen to the queen. But now after queen takes, uh, rook takes, now you have kind of the finishing move by Magnus, so see if you can find this move and sort of the next series of moves while I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, the move uh, sort of makes sense. The move is bishop to e4, but it might not make sense how powerful this move is. Um, this bishop is now skewering the rook to the knight. So the bishop is attacking the rook, um, but if the rook moves away, if, if the rook moves away, then it just bishop takes knight and uh, Magnus is up a piece. The problem is it's really tough to defend this knight. If you play rook to d2, then the dark square bishop just takes the rook, so that doesn't work. So here Jan tries to defend. He plays rook to c3, trying to stay in defense of the knight, but now bishop to d2, and now the rook is trapped. It can only go to three squares, all of which are guarded by the two bishops, and now Jan is just beside himself. He said, at this point, I'm missing every move. He's like, should I be playing chess? Just humiliating. He's, he also says some more funny lines. He's like, I'm confused by style. Doesn't make any sensible moves, but somehow keeps tricking me. Either he's the biggest genius in the world, or this is weird. And yeah, the first one is right. Um, uh, so uh, just funny. He's a really good sport about it. You should watch the video. He's all, he's you know he doesn't get mad at all. He's just like, wow, this guy's really good. Um, so here he plays rook to e3, giving up the rook. But even before bishop takes rook. Um, here, bishop takes knight on c2. Uh, the rook is still uh, in dire straits here. Uh, I guess it can move to e2, but this doesn't really work. Um, because, oh, 
it does go to e2, but the reason this doesn't work is because of bishop to b4, and now um, bishop attacks bishop, and uh, Jan was just like, wow. He's like, I think he said at this point, this is way over my head. If rook takes bishop, it, it looks like this is a good move for the rook because you're attacking both bishops, which obviously by definition cannot protect each other. Um, but if you take here with the uh, rook, then you get bishop takes bishop, and Magnus is just up a bishop. And here, uh, so here after rook to b4, instead of taking with the rook, um, uh, Jan just plays bishop takes bishop. Maybe this will work. Maybe now this bishop retreats and the material is equal. But of course, Magnus doesn't retreat the bishop. He plays bishop to d3, and uh, now the game is over because uh, this bishop is uh, attacking both of these rooks, which are two very powerful pieces that are placed very awkwardly on this light square diagonal. And you can't defend both of them. I mean, you can try to defend, but then you just lose the exchange, and now uh, you are down a rook for a bishop in the end game, and that's no good at all. So, um, just a wonderfully awkward final picture after this. Uh, I think, yeah, after this position, uh, after this move, Jan resigned the game and was just like in awe. Um, and, uh, you know, kudos to him for being a good sport. I think he found out later that it was Magnus and probably had a good laugh about it. Um, but this just goes to show how, how good Magnus is when he's playing against uh, really, really top players, players that are amazing, like top 1% of chess players. Um, even them, Magnus makes them just confused and throw their hands up because they're like, this is this is crazy. I don't know how to play against this. So gives you know gives a sense of the strength of the, the top, top players. But in any case, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, drop a subscribe. Let me know what other games you'd like me to review. And we'll see you next time.